All right, tubers, I wasn't planning on doing a vlog today, but I have to show you guys this. I'm trying to eat my breakfast. Actually, I just finished, and Milo is up here eating the bread. He was actually licking the ketchup, and he ate a piece of egg before. The three things on the sandwich I thought he would never touch. <laughs> he actually left the sausage alone, which is uh, what I thought he would eat. You were going to eat that, you were going to play. Look, there's a piece of egg there. Why don't you have that piece of egg? Now if I... <laughs> what a stinker. He's eating like little bits off. Let's see if I can break a piece off for you. Try that one, bud. See if you can eat that. No, right here. Right here, Milo. Milo. Right there, bud. Eat that. And now he's interested in just playing. Oh, you want that big piece, huh? Go get that. Go get that. <laughs> He's knocking it all over me. I think uh, I think you're done, Milo. All you want to do right now is play. Oh, oh, he got the egg. He got the egg. Oh, he likes the egg. That's lip smacking good, huh, Milo? Lip smacking good. Got the piece of egg, now he's trying to go for, he wants to go for the giant piece of bread, he can't even get this in his mouth, this cat. You're still just a kitten, Milo, there's no way you're going to eat that. You are so funny, Mr. Kitty. <laughs> he's got a piece of bread on his nose. <laughs> what you doing? Hey, why don't you go for the ketchup, you really seem to like the ketchup, try the ketchup again. Go get the ketchup. No? No more ketchup? No, back to the bread. All right, Milo, I thought you got your fill. We'll see you later, buddy. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Get this, tubers. He is back up here again, not two minutes later, looking for more food. What a stinker. We got to really watch his diet because he is going to get heavy like Baxter. You have got to take it easy, but little right, Milo. Tubers, so I give these two equal uh, screen time. Here's Baxter being very lazy on my bed. As you can see, so lazy I wasn't able to make it this morning because he's been laying on here since I woke up. Haven't you, big buddy? But we still need to get you on a little bit of a diet just like us because you are getting pretty big, bud. Yeah? What, what, what? Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh he is just very happy this morning. <laughs> he's very lazy this time of year. I don't know if it's the weather, the time of year, but they seem to be sleeping a heck of a lot more. At least Baxter is still doing very well. Still huge for a cat as young as he is. You gotta remember, this cat's only a little over a year old, a year and a few months. Probably still gonna get a little bit bigger than this, but he's an ultimate sweetheart. You good purr, bud? No purring? Okay. He does have an issue with itchy allergy eyes kind of like people do we got to try and get him some drops i've actually just been using the regular refresh wetting drops on him which seem to work most of the time but he really hates eye drops i i do it myself but it's really we really be better if we had two people because he fights it he definitely fights getting those drops put in and it's mainly this left eye right here or at least my, to my left i notice that that one stays closed a lot and if i open it up you can see it's a little bit red on their inner eyelid not the outer one but the inner eyelid gets a little red so uh need to go ahead and keep putting those drops in don't we buddy i know you don't like them but they're good for you all right we'll visit baxter again in a future all right, vlog. Tuber, so i've had several of you asking me about these dell optiplex uh computers i picked up at that thrift store this is one of about 25 that i wound up picking up over a period of about three weeks and they were all di different models they're actually three different models there were the optiplex 710s like this the 720s, and then the 790s. Um, the main difference being the 710s uh, actually were the newest. Um, they, they were Some of them were 4th Gen Core i5s. I've actually sold all of those. This one here 
is a third gen Core i5. The 7020s uh, were mostly the Core i7s that I got. I have one of those left, but I'm saving that for a project in the future. And the rest were the 790s. Now, the 790s I didn't like as much because they did not have the uh, USB 3.0. As you can see by this, the 7010s and the 7020s both had uh, super speed. Um, USB 3.0. Now, if I move this to the side, I'm going to show you something that I absolutely love about these computers, other than the easy access to get inside, um, is the fact that you can actually have uh, dual graphics cards in this. Now, there are a couple of ways to set this up. You can put two of the same graphics cards that are uh, Crossfire compatible and then use them with one monitor, basically to gain um, a graphics boost, if you will. In this case, I'm not running it that way. In this case, I'm running two independent uh, graphics cards, one controlling each monitor. That way, um, you can get, I, I believe this way you get even better performance. Yeah, even though you're not connecting them together, you're only using the graphics card for one monitor. So basically, you could be running, uh, say, uh, a rendering program, say something like Windows Movie Maker or Adobe Premiere with this card. And on this, at the same time, you could be watching a, a high definition video on YouTube using this card. That way, you're not sharing resources so in a way this is actually a little bit better for the way, for the way most people use computers uh, over here this computer has uh, eight gigabytes of ram this one can have a total of 32 um, you can actually have an eight gig stick in each of these slots which would equal a 32 but i find that eight gigabytes is sufficient for most people uh, on these computers you do have four um, SATA ports which I would have liked to have seen a fifth one there because theoretically you can have five SATA devices it, it allows for the two hard drives down here two optical drives on top and then a uh, third hard drive there oddly enough with these computers there is no place for something like a three and a half inch memory card reader it's just not um, it's not capable in these, mainly because I think these were business class systems. Most people didn't bother using those, or if they did, they would have something like an external memory card reader, something similar to this one. Right and then here. going to the back here, on top is your 300 watt Dell power supply. Um, this one is made by Delta, which I really believe can handle more than that. I think that's a very conservative of that because I've had these things apart and all the components, the capacitors, the transformers, the dials, everything in these power supplies are really beefy. So I would say you'd probably be good for close to 400 watts out of that. Your classic PS2 ports, love them. I think every computer today should still have these on there. Even if they're not being used, it's a nice way to free up two USB ports. You got two USB ports right there. These are USB 2.0 ports. Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, we have two display ports right there. Uh, four more USB ports. One is being uh, used by the U uh, by the wireless end dongle right there. Uh, we have regular VGA, a legacy serial port, probably because these were used, it was some sort of serial device, maybe a scanner, could have been a printer, but that's something that the previous owner decided they needed. Uh, right here you have your audio out, and then you have a combination microphone and line in port right there. So just basic, very, very uh, typical for a business class system. And here are the dual video cards. These are both uh, ATI Radeon HD 6450s, uh, one gigabyte of RAM per card. And the cool thing about this is all the options it allows you. Uh, this particular card, you can only have two monitors hooked in at once. So theoretically, you could have an HDMI, a DVI, or a VGA and HDMI. So looking at this, the way this computer works, you can actually have a total of, let's see, two, four. Basically, eight monitors hooked up because you can have two monitors hooked up to each of these. That's four. Then you have the VGA here. That's five. And then you have the, okay, I miscounted seven. So six, seven with the two display ports because um, with this computer, you can actually use the motherboard, the onboard graphics on the motherboard and the, exter and the external um, or the uh, expansion cards at the same time. So a very, very nice uh design right there most computers that i've seen will only allow you to use one or the other but in this one you can actually I hope use that kind of answered a lot of the questions for you. i'm sorry i'm a little tongue-tied this morning i'm still lacking in my first cup of coffee i had some orange juice this morning 
and uh, I wanted to wait and get my first cup of coffee before we do take our bike ride today. We are going to go down the bike path. I'm not going to film it today because um, it's a little cloudy, and I don't think it would come out that well. Plus, I forgot to charge my action camera last night. I know, right? <laughs> But um, hopefully I said it answers all the questions about that computer for you guys. I know I've been over this before, but I think a lot of you have missed that. So I wanted to go ahead and tell you exactly what these are. Now, these can be had on eBay for a decent price. I looked it up, the 7010s and the 7020s. Um, the Core i5s start around $200. The i7s around $300. And that's for the second and the fourth generation ones. Definitely good computers to go with. If you're looking for something uh, to use as your main rig, maybe build it up with an SSD, I would highly recommend going with one of these computers. Very, very well built. Uh, the components are solid. And the nice thing about these, the 7010s, is they are not proprietary in any way. So you can use regular components. You can get a third-party power supply. Um, you can upgrade the CPU. You can pretty much put any memory you want in there, except these will not take error correcting or registered sticks. Now, the odd thing about that is the 790s, the Optiflex 790s, you can actually put error correcting sticks in there, but not registered because, of course, they're mainly used for servers. All right, tubers. Well, I'm sitting outside for a few minutes. Going to enjoy my first cup of coffee here. Let's go ahead and have a sip. Ah, French roast. Very good. Interesting thing, I was listening to the AM radio this morning, and uh, there's a local, a fairly local company called New Market Financial, and they were talking about mortgages for houses. And uh, I know I haven't said this before, but I'm actually looking to get my own place, um, either as an investment and hopefully eventually some place to actually move into. And uh, it's amazing the deals that they're offering now. This, this month's deal with them, it's a 30-year fixed rate, 3.8% uh, or 3.86% uh, mortgage rate. You have to pay no closing costs and you only have to put 1% down. Which, if you get an example, is for a $200,000 house, it would be $2,000. So that's really appealing. I'm really impressed with what they're able to offer. So I don't know, guys. Sooner or later, you may actually see me with my own place. Now, Granted, if I do get it, I think I'm going to start it off as a rental property, and we'll have to see how that goes. I have a, actually have a friend that does this, so I can go ahead, and flies hit, getting into my coffee, I can go in and use his expertise. Uh, he's already said that he would help me uh, do this if I need to, but I'm trying to think of other sources of uh, income. And rental properties can be a very, very good source of income. Basically, you just got to make sure that what you're renting it for pays for the mortgage and hopefully a little, a little left over for incidentals. Like if you have to repair something in the house, like, you know, something happens to the plumbing, you know, you have to repair the floor. You got to think of all those kind of things. So we'll just have to see what happens. But very interesting that the mortgage rates are down that low nowadays. Um... Last time I heard, I think they were going up like 4 or 5%. And rarely do you ever see uh, a, a company that allows just 1% down. Usually standard is 10%. So let me, let, let me know what you guys think about that. Maybe somebody out there that knows a little bit about more, more about mortgages than I do. Well, Mom and I are going to go head out for a bike ride. I'm going to finish my cup of coffee. We will see what the rest of the day brings, and I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. All right, tubers. Well, even though this is summertime, we're going to go ahead and do a cold start on the Ford F-250 diesel. Not even going to use the glow plugs. It should start right away without them. Let's give it a try. Oh, yeah. No problem whatsoever. Now, since they've been on vacation, this truck now has... 117,509.5 miles. So for a diesel, this thing is still a little baby. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, Tuber. So mom and I are at the halfway point on the uh, bike path. Mm -hmm. We're sitting at this little uh, plastic bench that they have here. A lot of other people are taking advantage of it on this beautiful day. What was it, about 72? 70-something, 70 yeah. yeah. About 72 degrees right now, maximum of 78 so, man, that is just awesome. Very few uh, cool days like this in the summer. Um, we're going to decide from here whether or not we're going to go to the end. I'm not sure if we're going to do it today because we haven't bike rode in a long time. So we're trying to build back up. The first, day, the first time we only made it basically to the other street, which was about what? Uh, How many miles? A mile and a third in. So basically that was only Ooh. about two and a half miles total. We're going to be doing a lot more than that today. 
We just wanted to take a break. Mom needed yeah. to get a sip of water. I'll probably do the same. Um, we t this afternoon, we are going to a uh, car show over at Sonic in the Carrollton area. So I'll try to get some footage over there. I think that'll be kind of interesting. We're going to pause the video. Mom and I are going to enjoy oh, this beautiful it is just weather. gorgeous with the, with the leaves on the trees. There's a lot of shade. Beautiful today. Almost uh, very low humidity. It was in the 50s, about 52% humidity. So mm -hmm. feels very nice with the cooler temperatures. I hope we see a few more days like this Definitely. before summer's over. And I will talk to you guys when we get to the uh, car show. Bye. All right, tubers. So here's the bike path at the end towards my house. If I'm a lot of breath, that's because we just finished our bike ride. And as you can see, they have paved it into a little cul-de-sac here. The bike path continues going that way but as of last year this brush had all been cleared out getting ready to continue the bike path on but as you can see because the city of Chesapeake has been dragging their feet it's really grown up matter of fact this is where the old tracks used to go and you can probably hear the highway in the background what they were going to do is to continue the path and use the bridge under the highway just as the train used to. And from what I understand, they're still going to do that. But now, unfortunately, they have the added expense of clearing all this brush out again. Uh oh. Yeah. So I showed it to them. So what do you think? You think they're going to wind up doing it this year or no? I hope they do in the fall. We should call and, and uh, find out. And then we should probably get some kind of a petition up. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe call our councilmen, see what they can do because. Granted, it's nice, the bike path we have now, but it would really be awesome if it would continue towards Chesapeake. And what do they say? It's going to actually go through all seven cities eventually. It's going to go all the way to the beach, Virginia Beach on the ocean front. Eventually. Yep. And then all the way down to, to downtown Suffolk. So basically all yeah. through all of the seven cities of Hampton Roads. Right. So we're going to have to get on their bus to do this. Oh, definitely. We're we'll going to pause the video. We're going to go home. Probably going to, one or two of us are going to take a shower. And we'll see you when we get to uh, Sonic tonight. All right, so here we are at Sonic for the cruise in. Big, big showing tonight. So probably about, how many cars think we got here tonight? <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Yeah, they weren't thinking it was going to be this big, but the weather's beautiful. 70, uh, it just did 80 degrees. Got a little bit warmer than we thought, but not bad at all. I'm going to take you guys around a little bit when the sun starts to go down. It's a little too bright right now to get a good uh, picture, but yeah, got plenty of cars. Here comes one now. They're starting to uh, line up here at the drive through which they've actually closed. So I'm going to pause this video and then we'll see what they bring in later. Talk to you shortly. All right, so now they are filling up the drive through. Got a 69 Camaro RS. <laughs> Everybody's getting ready to order their dinner because it's half off for everybody today after five. Got a beautiful Chevrolet 1966 here. Let's see, what is this? This is an Impala, very pretty Impala. Over here, we got a 71 Chevelle. Hot Wheels edition. <laughs> Very pretty. I love the paint on here. SS 454. That is a beast. Turbojet 454. 365 horsepower. And believe me, it's got every bit of that. I ain't broke, but I'm badly bent. <laughs> That is so cool. Yeah, they start. They got so full they had to start filling up the uh, drive-through. This is very interesting. The Camaro with a '57. I could be wrong. I think it's in the '57 Chevy Dash and a custom front end here. Custom bars for the engine. Really, really pretty car. And there goes another so Camaro. Cool past a few of these cars. These you should recognize. Got some different cars here. Got a total of 90 cars here today. Amazing. Good. Nice Lincoln here. Not a classic, but still nice. Very cool. What do we got here? 
Barracuda, nice color. 442. They are totally filled. They even have the customer spots filled up today. 66 Red Mustang. 1960. I'm not really sure what this is. It's like a. Oh, it's an ass. It's a Rambler. Very cool. Some 55s here. Ooh. This is nice. This reminds me just of Dad's uh, Buick Electra, except this is a convertible. Love that dashboard. Classic 60s. One of my mom's favorite cars, the Ford Galaxy. This is the 500XL. This is nice. Love the sleek lines on these. I could think of, I could see this being a low rider, but uh, I would never do that to a beautiful car like this. Looks like they have an add-on FM radio down there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Probably factory, actually, from when this was new. Very cool. A little Triumph here. Can't even imagine it's beautiful, but I can't imagine getting my big butt in this thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool, too. 46 uh, Plymouth, I believe. 57 uh, Bel Air. I love the purple. Has a good. We're having a good time here today. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and I will see you guys when I get home. Tubers. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always... Have a blessed day, everybody. Yeah.